Assigning your building the correct occupancy type affects everything about a building from how large to how tall to the types of materials and a whole host of other design decisions that you'll have to make. In fact, building officials will also look at the occupancy of your building, especially when you submit the drawings for plan check or building and safety submittal. And if you're preparing for your next interior design exam or the NCARB ARE exam, then by the end of this video, you'll master the essentials to figure out how to classify the most common building types. Here in the US, we develop and apply the International Building Code. States and even some cities like Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York City, and Chicago even can adopt their own codes that supplement the International Building Code or the IBC. California, for example, has the California Building Code, but both the IBC and the CBC are structured with the same chapters and the same sections, except that the CBC will have additional requirements outlined in the code sections. The IBC defines occupancy as a way to, quote unquote, control the classification of all buildings and structures as to its use and occupancy. The philosophy is to assess the relative risk posed by each occupancy and to separate the uses into designated groups. So to determine the occupancy, we would ask questions of our clients, such as how many people will be using the building? Are there hazardous materials in the building? And how long are occupants going to occupy a space? So how does the building code actually come up with these classifications anyways? The best way to understand it is to read what the IBC states about atypical occupancies. Here's what it says. Such structures shall be classified for atypical occupancies, shall be classified in the group which the occupancy most nearly resembles according to, and here's the key words, the fire safety and relative hazard involved. So that tells us that each of the stated occupancy classifications, therefore, was determined by using fire safety and relative hazard performance data to develop the criteria for each category or group. The code is really trying to take a best fit philosophical approach when it comes to assigning occupancies. And this sometimes leads to a negotiation phase with the authority having jurisdiction. There will always be uses that just don't fit the strict definitions in the code. So how one communicates each space and its uses will play a large role in occupancy classification for such buildings. The point is, don't leave it to the authority having jurisdiction or the building official, whatever you want to call them, to decide and settle on just any building type for your project. Next, I'd like to take a look at the big picture of the 10 occupancy groups that are most commonly used today. Don't forget to check your state's occupancy groups in the code, as there may be additional groups. Here's the big picture. A. A stands for assembly. B. B stands for business. E. E is for educational. F. F is for factory and industrial. H. H is for hazard. I. I is for institutional. M. M is for mercantile. R. R is for residential. S. S is for storage. And finally, U is for utility and miscellaneous. Now, by, by no means should you attempt any exam, especially for the NCARB ARE exams, if you have not read the sections for these codes. Ready? Group A. Assembly Group A occupancies are the use of a building or structure or a portion thereof for the gathering of persons for purposes such as civic, social, religious functions, recreation, food, or drink consumption, or even awaiting transportation. And there's a whole list. These uses bring large groups of people together in relatively small spaces. Group A occupancies have 50 or more occupants. Make sure that you pay attention to numbers in the code. For example, if an assembly group occupancy turns out to be less than 50 people, then it could be classified as B occupancy for business. Always read the entire section of the code that you're referencing, including any exceptions or references to other chapters. Now that we've looked over the main definition of this assembly group, You'll notice on the screen to the left that there are five different subgroups or subcategories of assembly, 
A1 through A5. So let's take the time to review each of these now. A1. A1 group is assembly areas that are usually with fixed seats that are intended for viewing performing arts or motion pictures. The presence or absence of a stage is not a distinguishing feature here. Just make sure that you understand that there's probably fixed seats in most of the A group occupancy types, but specifically in A1, yes, there's gonna be fixed seats for sure. How do I remember this occupancy type? So for A1, I actually picture myself sitting in a movie theater eating a hot dog with a life-size bottle of A1 sauce that is so large that it actually goes through the ceiling of the movie theater. I know, silly, but it actually sticks in my brain. So the crazier, the more vivid the picture, I promise you're gonna remember it. Okay, I think we get the point here. Let's move on to A2. Group A2 is assembly areas where food and drink are consumed. The code actually assumes that alcoholic beverages may be served in the A2 category, potentially impairing the occupant's response to an emergency. And it also assumes that chairs and tables may be loose and may obstruct egress paths to exit the building. So to remember A2, okay, there's the number two. So I think of two people, myself and my best friend swimming in a giant pool of wine at our favorite restaurant. And yeah, that, that's quite a picture and quite a scene, but th that's exactly why it sticks in my brain. <laughs> If you come up with a word picture, please share it in the comments. I'd love to hear it, and I'll personally thank you in my next video. Okay, on to the next group, A3. A3 occupancies are assembly areas that do not fit into the other A groups. These uses include religious or worship areas or recreation or amusement. A library is actually also classified as an A3, but not to confuse this with a bookstore. If a facility sells books, then that would be classified under the M occupancy, which we'll talk about shortly. A4. Group A4 occupancies are assembly areas for the viewing of indoor sporting events. For you Celtics fans out there, I once attended a game in Boston during grad school, and it was one of my first ever games, but really fun. Okay, the next occupancy group for A5 is assembly areas for the participation or viewing of outdoor sporting events. Last year, actually, I attended my first ever Angels baseball game. And let me tell you, that outdoor stadium was crowded. Multiple levels, ample space between the seats with all you can order from your seat made it really a one-of-a-kind experience for me. So the difference for A4 and A5, A4, just remember, A4 is indoor and A5 is outdoor sporting events and arenas. Well, if your brain is not tired yet and you'd like to continue, take a pause here if you'd like and review some of the assembly area occupancy types. I really highly recommend that you go back through each of the sections in the IBC or the CBC or whichever code that you're referencing and do the following exercise. Look for the most common building types and just kind of put a note next to them or highlight them or jot them down because it'll serve you better on any exam. If someone were to tell you, and if, if the problem were to say that there is a school or there's a religious auditorium or some other thing, then you can save 30 seconds and you'll already know it. So 30 seconds here and there, it all adds up and you can be spending that time on a question that actually warrants your attention. The next occupancy group is business group B occupancy, which includes the use of a building or structure or portion thereof for office, professional, or service type transactions, including storage of records and accounts. Now, office buildings are classified as B occupancy. In fact, this question came up recently in a project that I was working on for a tenant improvement. And the storage areas in the offices, such as some of the file rooms, I realized were not necessarily classified separately. They ended up being part of the office overall B occupancy. And there's a lot of different ways to calculate that, but essentially if it doesn't 
go over a threshold in the code for the area, then it would be considered as part of the main occupancy of that building or that floor. If I were to ask you if educational facilities were part of B, business group occupancy, or E, educational, what would you think? Would you pick educational or business? Educational facilities for community colleges and universities for anything above the 12th grade is also considered a B occupancy and not a group E for education. Moving on to the next occupancy group is the educational group E occupancy, which includes the use of a building or structure or portion by more than six persons at any one time for educational purposes up to the 12th grade, which is kind of what we said earlier when we were part of the B occupancy. So again, just real quick, repetition helps. Anything up to the 12th grade is E. Anything after the 12th grade is gonna be a B occupancy. So going back to E occupancy, E occupancy includes uses for daycare centers of five or more children over two and a half years of age is also considered E occupancy. Uses with fewer than five children, such as a, a daycare center in someone's home, which I think most people are familiar with, is actually classified as an R3 space or occupancy. We'll cover this later, but it's a type of residential occupancy. Assembly uses at schools may potentially also be classified as E. These areas need to be evaluated, of course, for occupancy requirements. And finally, religious classrooms and religious auditoriums where you're actually learning something, accessory to churches and with fewer than 100 occupants are not E. These are classified as A3 occupancies. So as you'll notice, as I go through each of these groups, I'm going to bring up some of the anomalies where you would think that that occupancy would be part of that group, but in fact, it's part of another group. So that's why I say it is critical for you to go through and just evaluate some of the most common building types in your area, maybe projects that you work on in your firm, and really get to know which group those would be automatically assigned to. The next occupancy group is factory industrial, group F occupancy. This is the use of a building or structure or portion for assembling and disassembling and fabricating, finishing, manufacturing, packaging, repair, processing that are not classified as group H for hazard or group S for storage. Group F occupancy has two subtypes, F1 and F2, and these are basically divided based on their relative hazards of the operations in these occupancies. So F1 is a moderate hazard factory industrial uses that are not classified as factory industrial F2, which is for low hazard, uh, are classified as F1. That's, that's a pretty funny way of saying the definition, but that's pretty much what it says. If it's not an F2, then it's an F1 and shall include, but not be limited to. And then it gives you a whole list of these, such as aircraft manufacturing, athletic equipment, clothing, electronics, and more. That's pretty interesting. So then we go to F2, which is low hazard factory industrial. These uses involve the fabrication or manufacturing of non-combustible materials that during finishing, packing, or processing do not involve a significant fire hazard shall be classified as F2 occupancies, including but not limiting the following list. And there's a long list of it in the code. Beverages, foundries, metal products, and more. The main difference between F1 and F2 is that materials that are being manufactured, if they are considered to be combustible, then they would go in the F1 category. So in the end, if it's not F2, then it's between F1 and H, which is the hazard category. It's the quantities of materials that are being used in the manufacturing process that will determine the difference between F1 and H. Let's recap. So far, we've reviewed A for assembly, B for business, E for educational, and F for factory industrial. Are you liking the video so far? If so, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you're in the mood to hear part two of this video and the rest of the occupancies, then click here.